What value would you place on a human life? Really think about it. What value or what price would you place on your life? How much would you charge for an arm or a leg? What if I told you that in certain parts of Africa, individuals are hunted and killed for the color of their skin? Let's embark on a journey to understand the challenges faced by people with albinism in Africa, exploring how myths and misinformation have contributed to their persecution and highlighting the strength and resilience of these communities. I was shocked when I learned the tragic dilemma of albino individuals where neither the sun nor the shadow offer refuge. Did you know that in Tanzania alone, over 200 albinos have been brutally attacked in the past decade? According to Under the Same Sun, a respected organization working for the rights of people with albinism. And for what? Mere superstitions that fuel the greed of some. But amidst the darkness, there are stories of resilience and hope. Watch till the end to explore the courageous efforts of the albino community to fight back against discrimination and demand justice. From grassroots movements to international advocacy campaigns, the albino community is rising up to challenge the forces that seek to destroy them. On this journey, I shed light on the untold struggles of the African albinos and advocate for a world where every life is valued and respected, regardless of the color of one's skin. We'll explore the misconceptions that lead to the targeting of people with albinism for their body parts in certain rituals, emphasizing the need for education and change in these beliefs. What sets African albinos apart from others in their communities? To truly understand the challenges faced by African albinos, we must first delve into the science behind their unique genetic condition known as albinism. Albinism is a rare genetic disorder characterized by the lack of melanin, the pigment that gives color to the skin, hair, and the eyes. It is caused by mutations in the genes responsible for the production of melanin or its transport within the melanocytes the cells that produce melanin. According to Under the Sun, this condition affects about 1 in 20,000 in North America and Europe, whereas it has high prevalence in Africa with 1 in 1,400 occurrences in Tanzania. Without sufficient melanin, individuals with albinism have pale skin, white or light-colored hair, and light-colored eyes. They are also more susceptible to sunburn and skin cancer due to their lack of melanin protection against UV radiation. Can you imagine the constant vulnerability African albinos face, not only when they step outside under the sun's harsh rays, but also when they seek refuge indoors, where safety from discrimination and harm remains elusive? Not only this, but many African albinos also face discrimination and social stigma due to their appearance. In some cultures, they are considered cursed or magical leading to superstitions and harmful practices. You know, it's really important to understand that albinism isn't some kind of disease or disability. Sure, it affects the pigments in the skin and the hair and the eyes, but it doesn't define who a person is. With the right support and access to medical care, folks with albinism can lead productive lives and make a real difference in their communities. Just think about it. They've got unique perspectives and talents to share, just like anyone else. Treatment for albinism focuses on managing symptoms and preventing complications. This includes wearing protective clothing and sunscreen to minimize sun exposure, as well as regular eye exams to monitor for vision problems commonly associated with albinism. By understanding the genetic basis of albinism and working together to challenge harmful stereotypes, we can create a more inclusive and accepting society where individuals with albinism are valued for who they are. But what makes them a crucial part of witchcraft and hence a target for militia groups or anyone seeking money? Why are African albino organs sought after for witchcraft rituals? In certain regions of Africa, the belief in the magical properties of albino organs fuels a sinister trade driven by superstition and greed. Witch doctors, seeking to harness the supposed power of albino organs, perpetuate the myth that these body parts possess mystical qualities capable of bringing wealth, good luck, success, and protection. Hence, the bones of people with albinism are sold to practitioners of traditional medicine in Malawi and Mozambique for use in charms and magical potions meant to bring wealth. In Tanzania, their sales increase before the elections, as participants also seek help from witch doctors to increase their chances of victory. Another myth is that bones of people with albinism contain gold, 
Can you imagine how sinister and weird that is? But that's what lack of education brings to communities. Albino organs, including limbs, genitals, and blood, are sold at exorbitant prices on the black market. Tragically, this belief has led to countless innocent albinos falling victim to brutal attacks, their bodies mutilated and organs harvested for use in witchcraft rituals. Poverty also has a major role to play in this, as illegal traders usually come from poor families. They lure family members of people with albinism with the promise of $75,000 in a country where the per capita income is roughly around $2,000. This appears to be an enticing opportunity, no matter how dark it is. It again shows how humans can be lured into committing the most heinous crimes when tempted by the prospect of riches. Law enforcement agencies have launched crackdowns on the illegal trade, conducting raids on witch doctor hideouts, and apprehending those involved in the trafficking of albino organs. How effective have such efforts been though? Imagine living in fear for your life, simply because of the color of your skin. This is the reality for many African albinos, whose unique genetic condition makes them targets of superstition, discrimination, and violence within the African society. How ironic is it that a community marginalized or discriminized against for their color would perpetrate similar behavior towards another group? According to Under the Sun, an organization committed to ending discrimination and violence against people with albinism, over 620 attacks have been orchestrated on people with albinism in 31 countries since 2006. The attacks are prevalent in sub-Saharan Africa because of the cultural myth and superstitions regarding their significance for good luck and in witchcraft. The plight of African albinos extends beyond mere superstition and cultural beliefs. In Tanzania and other regions where the practice of witchcraft thrives, albinos are hunted like prey. Their body parts sought after for use in potions and rituals. It's a horrifying reality that albino body parts are highly prized in certain witchcraft practices. As mentioned before, they are believed to possess magical properties that can bring wealth and success to those who possess them. This demand has created a lucrative black market trade where albinos are targeted and mutilated for profit. However, this practice emerged in the 2000s, but the reasons for its rise remained largely unknown. According to Zihada Masimbo, leader of the Tanzanian Albino Society, when I was growing up, it was not like this. It was just a stigma, but not people coming to cut bodies. The attacks are mostly prevalent in the so-called lake zone, but the practice prevails in other parts of Tanzania as well. The issue of albino slaughter has reached the UN, so pervasive in its nature. Moreover, Various countries have racked up their efforts to curtail the practice, such as banning witchcraft. Despite these efforts, the persecution of African albinos continues unabated. Fueled by ignorance, poverty, and a lack of education, it's a tragic reminder that the deep-seated prejudices that still plague our society and the urgent need for action to protect the rights and dignity of all individuals, regardless of their skin color. I encourage our viewers to support organizations like Under the Same Sun, Albinism Society of Africa, and others dedicated to protecting and empowering people with albinism to promote the well-being of this persecuted community. Let's play our part in fostering a world that champions justice and equality for all. Together, we can make a difference. So what does albinism entail? In the next chapter, I examine the condition of albinism, as understanding the condition is the first step to dispelling the myths that revolve around it. What have we done so far to eradicate the plight of the people with albinism? Let's take a look. In today's Africa, the plight of African albinos takes on a sinister dimension as they find themselves hunted not just for their skin but for their very organs. This grim reality forced many albinos into a life of perpetual fear and flight. Reports of albino organs being sold on the black market for use in witchcraft rituals have sent shockwaves through African communities, leaving albinos vulnerable and terrified for their lives. In 2015, Tanzania banned witch doctors to stop deadly attacks on people with albinism. Tanzanian police have increased their efforts to prevent this gruesome practice. Many of them engage in secret ops and pose as potential buyers of the organs to catch the culprits. 
This has proved to be an effective technique and the attacks have dropped noticeably. However, there arises a surge in these attacks every once in a while. The United Nations has a dedicated plan for the welfare of people with albinism, i.e. National Action Plan of Persons with Albinism. It had a meeting in 2017 on witchcraft and human rights which discussed the attacks on albinos and trade of their organs. Many human rights organizations are working actively to curtail organ trafficking. However, despite efforts by governments and human rights organizations, the practice continues to thrive, fueled by corruption and entrenched superstitions. Forced into a life of hiding and consistent vigilance, African albinos are robbed of their basic human rights and dignity. They are forced to flee their homes, leaving behind everything they know and love, in a desperate bid to escape the clutches of those who seek to profit from their suffering. Many cases of organ trafficking or attacks on people with albinism are likely to go unreported. The existing figures are already alarming. You can well imagine how grave the issue is considering the unreported cases. While disrupting trade and attacks is a good practice, spreading awareness is a more crucial one. Recognizing the need, multiple organizations like Under the Sun, Albinism Society of South Africa, Albinism Society of Nigeria, and many others have been raising awareness and educating communities about the rights and dignity of African albinos. Witch doctors and traditional healers, who often play a central role in perpetuating harmful superstitions, have also been targeted with education and enforcement initiatives aimed at curbing their influence. Despite these challenges, African albinos remain resilient, standing up against injustice and fighting for their right to live free from fear and discrimination. With continued efforts and solidarity, we can work towards a future where all individuals, regardless of their skin color, are treated with dignity and respect. Can cultural resilience and empowerment illuminate the sunless path? Amidst the adversity and challenges faced by African albinos, there shines a beacon of resilience and empowerment rooted in their rich cultural heritage. Despite being marginalized and persecuted, African albinos have not allowed themselves to be defined solely by their struggles. Instead, they have embraced their cultural identity with pride and determination, reclaiming their place in society and challenging stereotypes. From traditional dances and music to storytelling and art, African albinos are reclaiming their cultural heritage and using it as a powerful tool for self-expression. In 2015, a first-of-its-kind festival was held in Kinshasa, Congolese capital, to celebrate the difference and diversity brought by people with albinism. Many community members remained on watch during the night to prevent kidnappings of their albino members. Moreover, many have initiated awareness campaigns to eliminate the stigma surrounding the albino community. Non-albino community members are also stepping up to show their solidarity and stand alongside their albino brothers and sisters in the fight against discrimination and injustice. Another example of African communities protecting their albino members is the Umoja Center in Tanzania that provides a safe haven for albino individuals who have been targeted by violence and discrimination. Through counseling services, legal aid, and educational programs, the center offers practical support and empowerment to those in need. Moreover, African albinos have taken it upon themselves to fortify their welfare. Organizations and initiatives led by African albinos are playing a crucial role in fostering a sense of community and belonging among albino individuals, providing them with a platform to share their stories and celebrate their unique identity. In addition, initiatives like the Albino Trust in Zimbabwe focus on raising awareness about the challenges faced by African albinos and advocating for their rights. Through community outreach programs and educational workshops, the Trust promotes inclusivity and acceptance, challenging harmful stereotypes and promoting a more inclusive society. According to a study conducted by the African Union in 2023, titled Empowering African Albinos, the role of community support, community-led initiatives have been instrumental in providing support and assistance to African albinos, with over 70% of albino individuals reporting that they have received support from their communities in times of need. Through these initiatives, 
African albinos are breaking down barriers and challenging societal norms, demonstrating that their worth and value extend far beyond their physical appearance. The notable names among many champions of the albino community include Peter Ash, CEO and founder of Under the Same Sun, Jake Epile, founder of the Albino Foundation, and Salif Kaita, renowned musician and activist. Despite the obstacles they face, African albinos are achieving remarkable success in diverse fields, defying stereotypes and inspiring others to dream big and pursue their passions. Whether it's starting their own business, pursuing higher education, or advocating for change, African albinos are making their mark on the world and proving that resilience knows no bounds. Through their activism and advocacy, African albinos are raising awareness about the challenges they face and mobilizing support for systemic change. They are demanding equal rights and opportunities for all individuals, regardless of their skin color or physical appearance. The fight for justice and equality is far from over, but African albinos are leading the charge with courage and determination, showing the world that they are not victims, but agents of change. As we continue to witness the resilience and the strength of the African albino community, let us also recognize the power of solidarity in driving positive change and building a brighter future for all of us. In countries like Tanzania and Burundi, where the practice of selling albino organs and bones for witchcraft is prevalent, the lives of albinos are fraught with peril. But why and how did this come to be? To understand the challenges faced by African albinos today, we must first delve into the historical context of superstition and beliefs surrounding albinism on the African continent. For centuries, albinos in Africa have been shrouded in mystery and fear. In many African cultures, albinism is often associated with supernatural powers or curses, leading to widespread misconceptions and prejudice. Historically, albinos were sometimes revered as, as divine beings or feared as omens of bad luck. This complex relationship with albinism laid the groundwork for the discrimination and violence that persists to this day. Now imagine yourself living in constant fear knowing that your very existence makes you a target for those who seek to exploit your body parts for profit. This is the harsh reality for many African albinos who must constantly be on guard to protect themselves from harm. As we reach the conclusion of our journey through the challenges and triumph of the African albino community, it's clear that their resilience and determination have laid the foundation for a brighter future. Despite the obstacles they face, African albinos continue to defy stereotypes and break down barriers, inspiring hope and change in their communities and beyond. From grassroots movements to legislative action, the fight for equality and justice for African albinos has gained momentum, fueled by the unwavering commitment of individuals and organizations dedicated to their cause. Through education and awareness, harmful stereotypes and superstitions are being challenged, paving the way for a more inclusive and accepting society where African albinos can thrive without fear of discrimination or violence. As we look to the future, let us remember that the resilience and strength of the African albino community and let us commit ourselves to supporting their journey towards equality and empowerment. Together we can shape a brighter future where all individuals, regardless of their skin color, physical appearance, are valued respected and celebrated for who they are. The progress made so far is a testament to the power of unity and collective action. By standing together and advocating for change, we can create a world where every individual, regardless of their skin color or physical appearance, is valued and respected and celebrated for who they are. Join us in standing with the African albino community. I would like to wrap this up with Maya Angelou's iconic words, dedicating it to the resilience of the albino community. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I rise.